Does your paintball mask look like this, but you want it to look like this? Then this paintball video is for you. We're going to show you exactly what to do for an entire mask assembly, regardless of what brand you own. Your paintball mask is arguably the most important part of all of your paintball gear. And if you follow that same theory of logic as me, well then take the next 10 minutes to learn how to completely take care of a paintball mask and lens, regardless of whatever brand that you decide to own in the future. Paintball lenses of the mask assembly are really what you care about right now. So we're gonna start with the lenses. A lens is made of polycarbonate. It's a plastic that's designed to withstand high impact. However, it's got a low resistance to scratching. Isn't that ironic? So we're gonna tell you now what materials you can use to clean it and what materials you can use to clean it with that will not scratch the lens. The material that you should use to clean a paintball mask shouldn't be a paper towel and it shouldn't be a regular towel. It shouldn't be anything other than, in my opinion, either a chamois or a microfiber. Now a microfiber is specially designed to lift dirt. But here's one of the strange things about microfibers. Uh, they also, because they are designed to pick up dirt, are notorious for holding dirt. So if you get one of these that's got dirt all over it, it gets to the point where you might have to throw it out. So my suggestion is, is when you start your day, you have two microfibers and Ziploc bags. One will be for lifting and removing the dirt from your lens. The second one will be for applying whatever solvent we're going to get to, to protect the lens as you go back into game. All right? So the first one, again, is going to be the collection. The other one is going to be for applying. Now we have a few different microfibers here in front of me. And you remember I talked about the Ziploc bag seri uh, uh, point? Well, the reason I mentioned that was simply because if you take and put a microfiber on a picnic table at your local paintball field, it's going to pick up dirt, you know, pieces of big dirt. So again, Ziploc bags, or at least some sort of safe environment for it. Now, this is a deep pile microfiber. I got it from Costco. And these run about $16 for 36 in a bag. Pennies on the dollar. You can take your investment, get just a few that you need for yourself, and sell the rest at your paintball field for three bucks a pop and make your money back and earn some too. Now, other microfibers that look similar to that will be ones that are awarded to you or usually given to you when you register at scenario events. So when you pre-register to a scenario, you usually get some decent swag, and it's usually always going to be a microfiber, and they print their uh, event details on it. It makes a great keepsake. So this one's made by Exalt, and Exalt usually does this for most of the vendors or most of the fields. And when you get it, it actually comes in a package in most cases. So this is from EMR Castle Conquest. Give them a little shout out. All right? Now, one side of the microfiber is dense. The other one has the deep pile. In general, the dense side is the part where you want to clean with and the piled side is the part that you want to apply your solvent with, your protective coating, okay? Now we also mentioned the chamois. Chamois have a very, very dense weave. They are essentially uh, probably the best thing you can do to soak up any sort of moisture. So again, either side's gonna work. One side for cleaning, the other side for applying. But be consistent throughout the day because your enemy to your paintball lens is anything abrasive, okay? you get more scratches from actually trying to clean your lens with a rubbing pattern than you ever do out in the woods by running through brush. And we all know this to be true. So again, we want to use one side or two, two separate fabrics to get this job done. Now before we get to the cleaning process, let me tell you a little bit more about your polycarbonate lenses. Most of your most expensive lenses are going to be dual paned. That means there's going to be an insulating layer on the inside of the lens. There's going to be a little foam insulator, and on the inside of your lens, there's going to be a secondary layer, which is like a vinyl plastic on the inside. It's very, very um, fragile, so you can't really push on it too hard or else you can destroy it. In the same respect, you also want to use your microfiber on the inside as well. Now, can you take and put a polycarbonate lens in a dishwasher? Danger Man says no. It's just a big no-no, and I'll tell you why. First off, when you buy a very expensive lens, they're going to put a protected coating on, a coating on this that you do not want to have anything that's a solvent-based or heat-based material because it will ruin it permanently. So you never want to apply an alcohol-based product to your lens. Once you've done that, you may not think that you've destroyed the lens, but you have. 
In the same respect, the heat from the uh, dishwasher water will also destroy that layer. Secondarily, if you put this in the dishwasher, the water is going to penetrate through that little foam layer and get between the insulator layers and sometimes it beads up in, inside. In addition to that, the foam itself will stay moist over a period of time. And the whole principle of that insulating layer is so that it creates a barrier between the different temperature zones and will not fog. By trapping the water in that foam, you then put yourself in a position where you're two hours into your game and that moisture starts to finally hit critical mass and you start to fog up. So don't put them in a dishwasher. You can, however, according to most manufacturers, put a mask in a dishwasher. However, I also advise against that because the hot water, again, will destroy the glue coating that applies the foam to the frame. So again, in general, let's stay away from dishwashers. Now let's get to the actual cleaning of the lens. Guys, for years we've been doing it wrong with lenses. I know that most of you know enough to use soap and water only, but most of us are just so ignorant we don't know that, that Windex and all those alcohol-based products are wrong. They are destroying our lenses. I have done some research and I found specifically this product, this name brand by Nanoskin, runs about $16 for this bottle. And this is specifically made for cleaning polycarbonates. So in the first step of cleaning our lens, okay, remember we're gonna clean it and then we're gonna apply the protective coating, we're going to use NanoSkin. All right, $16 a bottle. I know it seems expensive, but what I've done is I've simply taken one of my favorite spray bottles and put it in here. And now, when I'm out at the paintball field, I reach for my cleaner and I know that it's the right thing. So we, apply, we spray a little bit across the lens. We take our one side of our chamois or our starter microfiber, the one that we know we're going to get all the dirt on, and we remove the dirt. Then we move the, to the protective phase. Okay, the protective products are going to be things like Plexus. Now we all know what Plexus is. This thing's been around forever, but at $24.99 a can, mere mortals need not apply. But if you want to get something similar to this and go for half the price, less than half the price, Meguiar's 18 and Meguiar's 10. Now the difference between these two is, is that the 10 is essentially a restoration device. The, the, uh, the 18 is similar to Plexus in terms of a protective coating when you're done and you're ready to go back into the field. So if you do have a lens that has some scratches on it, okay, 18, take a drop, that's all we need. Almost like waxing your car. And just like with, um, you know, when you're cleaning uh, your, your eyeglasses or the lens on a camera, you do not want to rub. You want to barely wipe. Remember, the whole point of this thing is to lift the wax. It's not meant to grind. So all we're really doing is filling the cracks with the restoration wax here, okay, so that you can get some of the quality of the, of, the, of the lens back that you had before. This is really heavily scratched. You probably can't see it from this distance. We showed it when we started the video, but it does do a good job. So once we're done the restoration here, again, we may not even never use this. If we're just going to put on Plexus or something else, we're gonna spray it, take our finishing microfiber, give it those wipes, and it's gonna look fantastic. And now we're ready to go back into the field. Now, I know this seems like a real long process. I get it, but I'd rather give you all this information and you can pick and choose from this thing what you find can apply to your gameplay. You may decide, you know what, I never, I could give a crap about restoring a lens, but you may think that, wow, I never knew this was something I should be using and you might wanna go and find this. Same thing with Plexus. Listen, this is the de facto standard. Anybody who's anybody really, this is the go-to. Most people just stick with this and that's the end game for them. But it is expensive, as I mentioned. When it comes to the mask, just about any mask manufacturer will tell you all you need is a toothbrush to clean out the grill. When you have paint that's dried in, just whip out a toothbrush, work it away, and over a few minutes' time, you'll get it out. Now, if it's a, a, a white mask like this one, I'll usually use a bleach pen, let it sit on there for a few minutes, rub it with the toothbrush, and then wipe it with actually a wet rag to get all of the last of the bleach out of there. So we've taken you from the beginning to the end. Now, no matter what mask you buy, you're in a great position to take care of it. Now, if you haven't watched my video already on how to make your own protective sleeve out of a microfiber, I have that one up too. But just a quick overview, all you do is fold it in, uh, in half, sew all around the edges, cut it with a scissor, and now you can drop your lens right in. Now, unless you've got a hard case for your lens, I can't think of a better way to protect your very, very expensive investment. Forty to sixty dollars these things cost. So now you can just throw it in your bag and you're good to go. It's too much for any man! Danger Man is sponsored by...